Welcome back to Soul Fuel. We're here today at this lovely house. It's quite a big one. I'm going to show you a bit of the prep that goes in before the solar and why I think it's important that electricians do the install. So this is where the power starts. This is where it's going to feed the property. Now we have had this slightly altered because before we had overhead lines from here all the way over to there with um, a range of UK power to get that taken underground. So it now goes underground from there, comes along here and up this pole into the transformer, which then comes down into these three fuse carriers that are then going to supply the property via our little kiosk that we have built over here. You wouldn't normally have this on your property. Some people do, some people don't. If you have got it on your property, it's always worth checking that they have permission for it to be there because you could always get paid sometimes for it being on your property. So this is our kiosk. So from the pole over there, power comes in. So the DNO owns this. This is UK Power, um, where we are. Uh, this is going to be the meter. And what we've done is we've put in this big fused isolator. We've got 150 mil five core cable. It's going to take the power from here over to our little mains electrical cupboard over there. Usually you wouldn't have stuff this big for yours. This is just because this is a large property. This property here, we've actually got a 200 amp incoming supply to feed it. That's because there's quite a lot going on, which we'll sort of, we'll see later on. So yeah, we're going to have 70 mil cables coming from here to feed this. And then because of the volt drop, because we're probably about 50 meters away, we've got our 70 into here, and then we've got to up it to 150 mil to our electrical room. Three phase basically means in simple terms, we've got three suppliers coming into this property. We need more power, basically. We've got this fuse carrier here because our electrical room is gonna be more than three meters away from here. So we have to put our own fuses in because we're not actually allowed to rely on the DNO's fuses. So as you can see, we've got our three fuses hanging down here, which UK Power have left. We're not quite finished over at the house yet with the electrical stuff. So at the point that when we're ready, they'll just come along, pop these in, and we should have power. This is why that cable is so big, because our electrical room's all the way over here. Let me show you what's going on. Here we've got the other end of that 150 mil five core that comes up here, again, into another isolator. So from the 150 mil, we can now go back into the 70, which feeds this nice big panel board. The reason we've got a panel board here and it's this big for a domestic uh, and not your usual sort of smaller three phase board is because this property has got a 200 amp incoming supply. These are only really good for 100 amp and you've not got much room for cable entry and whatnot. So that's why we use a panel board because this is rated at 250 amps, which is suitable for the supply we've got. This is our incoming meter. This is monitoring the power for the whole property. The way this works is it's got this little comms cable that links to this CT clamp here. It's really a clamp, it's more of a pass through, but that's how it monitors what's coming into the property and what it's actually using. We've also got on this property a meter for each consumer unit, just so that we know, you know where the power's being eaten up most, so we can sort of, we'll have a better understanding of where the power's being used up. So we've got a meter here that monitors the top floor fuse board consumer unit in the house. First floor consumer unit, ground floor consumer unit. We've got this meter here that's gonna monitor our mechanical board, which is monitoring the heat pumps and the air conditioning units. We've got this meter here, that's gonna be our solar consumer unit for in the future. And we've also got this meter here, which again is future for a potential swimming pool building that's gonna be over here. So this is our little consumer unit for our solar that's gonna be going in in the future. So we've prepped for it. We know, we know the customer's gonna have it. We know it's going to happen so we've prepped for it now whilst we're doing all this other work and this will house a couple of solar arrays he's potentially going to have and also some battery storage so we've got plenty of room in there so the plan is we're going to have an array down the bottom there where it's sort of out of sight out of mind and then we're also going to have because this roof over here has been redone we're going to have a nice split east-west system up on there so one of the reasons why the supply here is so large, the heating hot water is being done by the three heat pumps. It's also got two AC units over here. So each one of these is 32 amps. Another couple of 32s down there. So this is one of the reasons why the supply needs to be so large. So this is the plant room. Up here, we've got our three controllers for said three heat pumps. These heat pumps were spec'd. So we've had to go with Samsung. Disadvantage of Samsung, you can't parallel the comms together. So that all three are gonna work independently from each other. 
some heat pumps, they'll sort of share the load. So one will start, once that's done a couple of hours, it will then swap to another one, to the third one. If they struggle, they'll all sort of come on so they can adapt how they work. These, however, are just gonna be sort of on or off. We've got underfloor over in the house. So that's gonna send a, like a boiler run signal or heat pump run signal over here. And then that will just in turn flick a little switch in each of these and tell them to run. They will then in turn heat the buffer tank, which the underfloor heating draws off and heats the house up. So there's a lot of bad press about heat pumps. So people saying they don't work or they're not efficient and all that. But if you can heat a house like this with three heat pumps, then they're certainly working. Main components or bits we've got in this plant room. We've got our expansion vessel here. This is for the heating. Now, basically all that's what's inside there is a balloon. So as the pressure increases and decreases, that balloon will expand and you know press against it. So pressure stays pretty level. We've got our buffer tank. This is our store of heat for the underfloor heating. We then move around. We've got two hot water tanks, which will heat up together. So they'll sort of do this. Now the way a heat pump works is the heating comes on the heat of water, mornings and evenings as and when you need it. But in doing that, you're potentially allowing the tank to drop and then you've got to dump a load of heat in it to get it back up. The way a heat pump works is it will just sort of keep topping it up. So as it drops off, it'll just heat the top up. So your hot water should always be hot. So that's what these two are. We've then got our boost set. We've got a lot of showers and taps in the house. So this is basically a store of water that these pumps will turn on to keep the pressure constant in the house. And then round here, the last thing in here we've got is we've got our main circulation pump for the heating. So this draws off the buffer tank. So whenever there's a demand for heat in the house from the underfloor, that will energize this. This will also energize our three little relays we've got in here that we haven't quite wired in yet but this is the border enables, if you like, for each heat pump. You can't have the border enable from there on the same supply, because they're on different supplies. That would cause some nuisance stripping, so we've got a relay for each heat pump, which will tell the heat pumps to turn on. Heat pumps, they obviously run off electricity, so customer here wants to be green. Also, obviously, mainly reduces bills. These can be quite juicy to run when it's cold, but this is why the solar is going to be super important, because that's going to help reduce the running cost of these. In the summer months, we're going to generate loads. So those, those AC units are going to be running for nothing. In the winter months, may not cover the full usage of these, but it's certainly going to help, which is good. And the thing with solar is the more you use, the quicker your payback's going to be because you're going to, you're maximizing your self-consumption. So when these are on and the solar's generating, these are going to eat up all that power, which is going to ensure that, you know, you're making your savings where you can. The main purpose of this video was to show you a little bit of the prep work that goes in before the solar. I've seen a lot of solar companies pop up recently, of which some are double glazing firms that are just jumping on the solar bandwagon. It's super important that you do your research and make sure the, the installer that you're getting around knows what they're talking about and are qualified. But here at Soulfuel, all of our installers are fully qualified and insured. I hope you've liked this video and hopefully we'll see you on the next one.